Good morning, Breakfast with Bacon fans. I am so amazed at God's divine providence. I have spoken to you before about the only approved Marian apparition site in North America, in our country, the United States of America, in the state of Wisconsin, my home state. And I finally got to go there about two years ago and something in my heart just changed and it was so amazing. And I wanted to talk again about that show. And I looked up somebody just last week and said, I'd really like to do a show about the shrine. And I find out that this coming weekend, they're actually doing a conference in Our Lady of Champion in Champion, Wisconsin. And these two beautiful ladies you see on the screen are here to tell us all about not only the shrine, but the miracle, the conference, and the flame of love, which is pretty much miraculous food sent from heaven to heal us in these difficult times. So today we have with us Jill Metz, who is the national director of the Flame of Love, just Flame of Love, right? Um, of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Um, yeah. and, and then also Lori Brown, who is the Midwestern uh, director of the Flame of Love. So ladies, I am so excited to have you on the show. We have joined hearts about this topic, don't we? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. We have. So before yeah, I ask I love you, your passion. Yeah. <laughs> so I love yours. That's what that's why we're here. So let me, because we don't want to waste any time, we need to tell people around America, around the world, actually, about the shrine. So let's start with our Lady of Champion. Did either one of you take it? What is the story of Adele Brees and Our Lady of Champion? Lori, Jill, shall go I go right ahead? Yes, please. Okay. So there was a, a lovely young woman in her teens who was from Belgium and part of the Belgian community there um, in what is now called Champion, Wisconsin. And she was actually walking through the woods with a friend and she saw a bright light and a beautiful woman. And it was the queen of heaven. That is how Our Lady presented herself. And uh, there were actually several apparitions, but when Our Lady spoke, Adele says, who are you? And she says, I'm the queen of heaven. And she came to bring her messages and they're not lengthy. You can look it up online. They're all about really forming children in the faith. But for all of us, um, Our Lady says, I know you go to mass every day, but that's not enough. I want you to pray for the conversion of sinners. And I want you to help form the children in this wild country of yours is what she called it. This is 1859. So a lot of open countryside and farmers and so forth. So long story short, Adele was just so amazed as all of us would be to have the queen of heaven inviting her to do this task. And so she took it quite seriously. She would walk up to 50 miles to visit these people that were out in the prairie area and the countryside so that, and then she would offer to do the chores for the mother so that she could teach their children catechism. That was the trade. I'll I'll do your chores if you let me teach your children about the faith. And that she did. And she eventually had a little order of nuns and they built a schoolhouse. And um, it, was, it was just a beautiful thing and certainly applicable to today as well. And I'd like to interrupt real quick before you speak. I am a Wisconsin girl. And for those of you that don't know Wisconsin, that is deep, cold snow. And to walk 50, 56 miles, you said she would do this during the summers and the winters all year round. And that is, it can be some treacherous weather. And to, to speak that this young lady was willing to do this in full habit in those kind of, um, um, that kind of weather is just, first of all, speaks to how her character and how much she really loved our Lord and our lady to want to do this. Absolutely. So, yes. okay, so go ahead then. So she appeared to her. Did people believe in the miracle right away? Did what happened? How did how did we get on to? Because I know we want to talk also about the Great Peshtigo fire, which happened what about twelve years later? Exactly. So, yes. So the Bill, go ahead. I just wanted to give some dates to the timeline um, that uh, this the celebration of. Our Lady's apparitions took place in 1859, and then the miracle of the fire took place in 1871. 
And just um, in 19, or I'm sorry, in 2010, Bishop Ricken gave approval for this apparition site in the U.S. And again, as Christine said, the only approved apparition site in our entire country. We should be flooding this place. Um, this is where Our Lady appeared. And when you visit there, it is very evident that her presence is also there. Um, and also Adele's presence is quite, uh, I mean, apparent. Don't you feel that way, Lori? Oh, yes, she's buried there. And they have actually two churches. They have what they call the chapel, which is a very nice church where they have mass. Then there's a crypt church underneath, which is built on the spot where the Queen of Heaven gave these messages to Adele. And I know Jill and I both have been down there. Me too. I recommend that everyone go, okay, go there, be quiet, go there just with you and Our Lady. And I mean, you can have other people with you, but go and just listen in your heart. She will speak to you. It's her presence is so almost palpable. It's, yeah. it's really it's a very thick. moving. It's thick. It's yes. like being in uh, um, a vat of holiness. I mean, you just really mm. feel it down there. Beautiful. I, I think, so I don't know how many you guys have been to. I've only been to three. I've only been to Fatima, Guadalupe in Mexico city, as well as our lady of champion. And I will say our lady of champion is second or maybe even it's equal to Fatima with me. And it is just that powerful. And perhaps because it is so small and it is still so pure. It's just so yeah. pure. Th those are words that I was going to well, use to Christine to describe it. it. It's, it's a very humble shrine. So when you go there, your expectations may be that it's going to be this great um, cathedral and, um, you know, basilica type church, but it's, it's not, it's just what our lady would want. It's very humble. It's very peace filled. And um, at the same time, it's very powerful. You can feel the power of our Blessed Mother there with you. And I would even extend that to the people that serve at the shrine. It's evident in those who are there at the shrine, whether it be um, the priests that are there or uh, the employees, you can see Our Lady's presence even in interacting with them. It's just a wonderful, wonderful, um, unexpected um, joy to be there. May I share one more story before I ask you ladies a question? So yeah. I was there once and I met the groundskeeper. <laughs> and uh, for those of you that have never been there, Adele Brees, um, who I pray will be a saint soon, is yeah. buried. And then behind her are about eight little headstones of children because she would always teach as well. So the groundskeeper came up to me and told me this story and showed me the actual pictures. It was a snowy, snowy weekend, whatever. And he showed up and the entire grounds were covered in snow. But he looked and in front of two or three, I cannot remember, in front of two or three of the children's headstones were little tiny snow angels. And there were no footsteps no footsteps. Wow. And he took a picture and he showed me. <laughs> wow. And I just, I mean, I'm still thinking because she loved the children so much. And as you know, our Lord loves the children so much, but God still works these kind of miracles that, that people can see in this year, in this millennium, and that he allowed me the privilege to, and this was a humble man too, going, you know, and how do you get these teeny tiny little snow angels, you know, the size of a toddler and you don't see yeah. footprints around it. <laughs> It was excellent. That's, that's beautiful. Wow. <clears throat> there's there's little treasures like that throughout. So even sometimes people will collect some of the soil there. Um, the gift shop there is fabulous. But the first place I would visit is the crypt um, and, and visit Blessed Mother's um, uh, statue and image there in, in the crypt when you go there. Again, um, they have, I don't know if you've been there recently, Christine, but they have all those new relics there within just the last uh, 10 years, I think that those have, or five years, should I say. Um, so they have quite the collection of relics that you can venerate and um, again, come to our conference or go there alone. Um, just go with your husband, go with your family. There's so much to see and experience there.
Yeah, we're going to talk about the Flame of Love Conference, but I'm still so excited first. I just got to build this up. Okay. Good, so before good. we do this, we got to talk about the Great Peshtigo Fire. Because Jill, thank you so much for giving us that yeah. timeline. In 1959 is when all of the, the when our mother spoke to Adele Brees. And then in 1971 is that's when the fire was. 18. 1871. 18, 1871. So this 12 yep. years, correct me if I'm wrong, um, is in that time they had the townspeople believe that she did speak to Our Lady and they built a school. They built what well, really wasn't a school, but this little premises and they had this area. And if I remember correctly, it was fenced in the chapel that they built over that area. And then they had the fence. And, and so people knew this is really like a, a, a holy place. So that when this fire happened i'll let you guys take it away they knew that this was a place they needed to go does anybody want to tell the story of the great peshtigo fire that took place at the same time the great chicago fire did Lori, would you like to do that well i'll, I'll start and if you have to um add anything that would be great i think amazing that we all hear about the chicago fire but not as much about the peshtigo fire and it actually was a greater stronger fire it was uh, it covered more area. It destroyed everything in its path. And of course, in 1871, they weren't able to contain it. I mean, it was out of control. Even the water that it would pass over or around would boil. People would would be killed because they jump in the water to cool off and they couldn't. That so was really bad. Well, back at where this chapel is in Adele and the people of that area, they what did they think of? All they could think of was to run to Our Lady, to ask her help. So they all gathered in the little chapel that I think Adele's father built. I think I read that somewhere. But um, it, it had a fence around it, around the, the churchyard, as Christine said. And they began to pray the rosary. Oh, we lost Lori. Hopefully she'll be in soon. Do you want to pick that back, pick that up where we left off, Jill? I, I, I wish I could do it as well as Lori's doing it, but um, I, I do not. Here, she's coming back on. She's coming back. Yep, yep. So um, signals. We didn't we didn't go without you there, Lori. We'll wait for your audio. Okay. Right? Okay, there you go. Your audio okay. is good. So pick up where you left off. So they had the fence around it and they started praying the rosary. Right. And so this fire is coming. I mean, it is so close to the church, but they prayed even harder. And you know, that fire stopped just short of that fence, did not even enter the church yard, as they, as they say. And um, I believe it was a rain that finally put it out. It was just a miracle, an absolute miracle because of where it stopped. Clearly, Our Lady had, you know, this was a miracle that she obtained for them. So, the, so and my I adding to out. that, the memory of is that the outside of the fence was scorched. The inside of the fence was still pure white that you couldn't even smell smoke on the inside. The people, the animals, the buildings were all, as you said, dropped down to non, non recognizable foundations. Everything was ash. And on the inside of here, the, those people who thought to come in, they and their wildlife, their cattle were all saved, but everything outside of it was devastated, dead, gone, and unrecognizable. So that, did they go around two of the monstrance? That I couldn't remember. I, I thought that they went to all three different sides, but I couldn't remember if it was with the monstrance or not, or was it just praying the rosary, or none of us remembers for sure. I, I well, don't recall that detail. What? So that's the great Peshtigo fire, and that is... It used to be called Peshtigo, which I think the city of Peshtigo still exists, but it's Champion, Wisconsin, and it used to be called Our Lady of Good Help. So if you're looking this up on the internet, you may find Our Lady of Good Help. But uh, Lori, I think you said to me recently that it was changed to the official name of Our Lady of Champion. The Vatican had its hand on this. Was it, was that you or was that Jill? Please forgive me. No, that was me. And uh, my, from what I understand... It's because of the Vatican is check, is looking into an official feast day for this. And so it because it was a victory for heaven, right? I mean, this was a miracle. They changed the name. And I think it's really quite apropos. Yeah. So before we go to Flame of Love, I just want to summarize Our Lady of Good Help, which is celebra celebrated on October 9th, because that's um, when, the, when Mary spoke to 
Adele Brees um, has now been changed, was approved by the Bishop of Green Bay. So it's an approved Marian apparition. And the Vatican also is approving it such that it wants to give it its own official feast day. So this is not just a local thing. This has gone all the way to the Vatican. So that's just so exciting to me. I love all that. Anyway. Yes. And it's the level, it's at the level of Fatima and Lourdes yeah. in Guadalupe. I mean, that's what we need to keep in mind. It's, yeah. this is huge. For it's such a time as this. For such a time as this. Amen. So how does all this connect to the flame of love? Uh, that's what's also huge because the conference that you're doing is September 7th and 8th or 6th and 7th. Correct. Yep. And so gets take that away. What is the conference called? When is it? And then how did the flame of love kind of come together with Our Lady of Champion? Lori, do you want to introduce them to the conference um, date? It's in your region. Um, and maybe I can expand on how the theme came about and et cetera. Yes. So the theme is in keeping with this three-year Eucharistic revival we're experiencing in our country, because it's true. The flame of love is Eucharistic and Marian. And then we add, do whatever he tells you, because we're getting these messages from heaven for, as you said, Christine, such a time as this. And we need to listen to the advice we're getting, this heavenly advice on how to turn things around in our world. In this diary of messages that Jesus and Mary gave to Elizabeth Kendallman, we are told that the world of the future is in our making. It's up to us. How are we going to respond? Yes, that's the full diary. Very uh, comparable with Divine Mercy, the Divine Mercy diary. Right. So, yes, we're having this conference. We have some amazing speakers that are coming. We've got the National Director of the Flame of Love from Canada that will be there. Our National Director, Jill, who's on this podcast. Um, we also have... Uh, our international director of the Flame of Love, John Sullivan, who in fact, I believe today, he has just come back from a month in Africa where he's That's been right. spreading the Flame of Love. He's a missionary, I mean, a worldwide missionary. So he's gonna be there and share his stories and what he's experienced. We also have Don Warden from the National Shrine of Our Lady of Champion. We'll be giving uh, the story of, our, of Adele Breeze, but also connecting it with the Flame of Love, which he and his family pray. They love the Flame of Love. Um, we also have an amazing guest, and that is the mother, Marianne Dupong of Michelle Dupong, who died of cancer at 30 years old and is now servant of God. And she is, so she's on her way to sainthood. In fact, her mother spoke at the National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis a month ago. And so she's going to be there at our conference, and she's going to tell her story. We've also got the, uh, the director of young adult activities in New York City. Um, that diocese under Cardinal Dolan will be there and they're going to tell their story. They have a flame of love cynical that's very active every Tuesday night at St. Patrick Cathedral, downtown New York. So imagine that. So I could go on. We've got Dr. Uh, Father Dan Schuster, who is a just a flame of love favorite. He's a very entertaining speaker. We love him so much. And a Father Robert Thorne, who is going to conduct a healing uh, service for us and it's going to be Mary it's Mary's birthday weekend so we're going to celebrate our blessed mother's birthday too so wow. would you like to add anything Jill well, well that was excellent Lori um I would add that this is an opportunity if you want to come to Our Lady of Champion Shrine never is there a better time than this weekend not only is it Our Lady's birthday um, so those graces there that she'll be pouring out to souls um, on her birthday, but also to receive this gift of the flame of love, which is what we like to call a remedy for these times. What we truly believe is God's gift to the world for, the, as you said, for such a time as this. Um, so I wanted to um, just share a little bit about the flame of love with, with, your viewers, if I can, could you read my mind? That's exactly what I was going to say. There are some people watching that don't know what we're talking about. Yep. And so the flame of love, it's the flame of love of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And um, it is a gift of a gift for the church for this time. It's a transformative gift. 
And the principal purpose of the flame of love is a gift of grace that actually blinds Satan. So if I could, I could read you in, in the diary just a short passage about the blinding of Satan and um, why that is such uh, an important thing to experience right now in this yes. time. So let me. And this is approved as well by the church, Elizabeth Kindleman's uh, locutions. Um, it is. Church approved. It is. It is. Um, it's church approved. It's blessed by Pope Francis. Um, and it has the book has the imprimatur um, uh, as well, the diary. So, but the principal purpose of the flame of love is the blinding of Satan. And it says in the spiritual diary, that which you held up here, it, we, we like to go with the um, full diary. But on November 6th and 7th in 1962, um, this is what the Lord says to, um, or this is what Our Lady says to Elizabeth Kendallman. She says, my little one, you are the first one showered by the effect of my flame of love full of grace. And in union with you, I am extending it to all the souls. Whenever someone does adoration in a spirit of atonement or visits the blessed sacrament, as long as it lasts, Satan loses his dominion on the parish souls. Blinded, he ceases to reign on souls. So this gift of grace, when one soul receives it, um, it has the potential to blind entire families from, from Satan and to blind entire parishes. It, it's, it's really um, astounding. So we want to talk a little bit today about it, you know, how this, how this gift of grace works um, and to kind of share the ABCs. So we like to um, help viewers to identify and people um, to identify the flame of love with divine mercy, because we believe and we know that this is a, a, a progression of grace for this time. So it really came from Fatima, our, our Lady's call of Fatima, which was to make reparation for souls. Um, do the first Saturdays, go to confession in a spirit of atonement. Um, even Medjugorje, the five stones of Medjugorje, right? Our Lady continually asks us to make reparation for her children um, and for the blasphemies committed against not only um, her, but our Lord Jesus Christ, especially in the Eucharist. So we're in this time of grace because we know that where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. And while we were not able or while we did not cooperate with the graces that Our Lady gave us at Fatima, our Lord gives us what? Divine mercy. He gives us the gift of divine mercy for the church. And even that gift of divine mercy is still being discovered by many souls. Some people are not even aware of what the gift of um, divine mercy Sunday holds for us. I mean, incredible, right? Yeah. It, it, Catholics are still learning about this. Well, um, after what we believe, after this time of divine mercy, which we're still in in the church, our Lord I, I'd like to say ups the ante a little bit and, and gives us even more by sharing this flame of love of his, uh, of our lady's immaculate heart. And again, the principal purpose of this gift of grace is to blind Satan so that souls would be converted. So the ABCs of the um, divine mercy are um, what, Christine, do you know the ABCs off the top of your head? Or Lori, do you know the for ABCs? The first for the Saturdays or for the Divine Mercy? Just the Divine Mercy, the ABCs of Divine Mercy. Not in front of me. I know the first I, I can I can tell yeah. you. So um, A of Divine Mercy is ask. Ask God for his mercy. Ask Jesus for his mercy. The B for Divine, for divine Mercy is be merciful ourself. Right. And then C is complete trust in God. This is such an easy way to enter into that spirit of divine mercy, you know, asking for the graces, um, being merciful ourselves, and then the complete trust that the Lord is merciful. Well, for the flame of love, we have also the ABCs and the A of the flame of love is accept this gift of grace. 
this is a gift from from our lady um, for all mankind. And on page 28 of the diary, it, it explains exactly what this miracle of the flame of love is. And Mary says, and this is the first communication that she had with Elizabeth Kendallman. She says, with this flame full of graces that I give you from my heart, ignite all the hearts in the entire country. Let this flame go from heart to heart. This is the miracle becoming the blaze whose dazzling light will blind Satan. This is the fire of, of love, of union, which I obtained from the heavenly father through the merits of the wounds of my divine son. And so this, our lady knew that we would need God's grace for this time. And so she went to God, the father and um, pleaded with him, bringing to mind the merits of the wounds of Jesus to spread this grace heart to heart for every single soul, not just those that are baptized, but every soul on the face of the earth. And so the A is that we open our hearts to accept this gift of grace. The B is if we do accept this grace into our hearts, we will blind Satan. That means we will disarm him. His influence will no longer um, be um, so over us that we're not even able to make decisions for God. We see people stumbling in this right now. People, good people in the church, good people that are blinded blinded by materialism, blinded by politics, right? Blinded, blinded with um, just things of the earth. This flame of love allows us to live a life of beat the Beatitudes so that when Satan is blinded, we can enter into a state where we can start repairing the church with our prayers, our sacrifices, and our desires. So the sea is conversion. So conversion for the whole world, not only conversion that starts within our own heart, but then goes into our families and goes into our communities. And again, it's the conversion that is um, ultimately what blinds Satan and brings about the God's divine will, uh, his kingdom on earth. Yeah, and conversion of more souls. I have a great story. So what our viewers don't realize is I definitely pray before every show. When we prayed before this show, we actually prayed the unity prayer, which is what's given by the flame of love. I have, um, so every time I take a client, we pray before we start talking. And I had this one woman who would meet with me every single Friday. Her her marriage was wretched. And um, I, I can't obviously share any details, but it was pretty violent. And every Friday we met, she and her husband would have this massive fight. He didn't lay hands on her, but it was violent and verbally. And it just, she would text me or call me Saturday just saying, oh, it's, it's awful what's going on in my house. So after about four weeks of doing this, five weeks perhaps, she said to me beforehand, can we pray the unity prayer? And I'm like, oh, why did I even think of that? Because we would pray the Our Father and the Hail Mary, which have obviously powerful. But we pray the unity prayer. And we had our session and that next week we met, she goes, nothing happened. It was a great night. So yeah. Satan would listen into the counseling sessions usually. And then he goes and he arms the enemy or the people that you're fighting with and, and, and riled them up. But when he was blinded, he had no idea what we talked about. He was okay. not able to get near us. So he wasn't able to affect any damage in that marriage. And so I was like, why did I not do that sooner? So every time I meet with a client, that's the prayer that I pray and it works. It really it works. Work. It does work. Praise be to God. Um, we have so many and we get to hear so many of those stories um, every day uh, about how the unity prayer in particular, because the unity prayer is the prayer that has this um, blinding of Satan over it. So um, we've even heard a story where someone was absolutely invisible to evil when they prayed the unity prayer. Evil could literally not see them. And so that's described in the diary, this blinding of Satan in, in many different ways. 
um, I just read that passage from you uh, for you that if someone is praying in that spirit of atonement, the flame of love prayers in a parish, the whole parish yeah. is blinded from Satan. Or Satan's I mean, blinded from the parish. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. I knew yes. what you meant. I knew what you meant. <laughs> well, that's good. I hope our, our listeners did as well. So, Lori, did you have anything uh, about particularly the blinding of Satan and um, some of the effects of the flame of love? Yes. I, you know what? I think that, um, again, we like to use the actual words of Jesus and Mary. What did they say about this? So we can all learn from them. And they're, they're beautiful, anointed words. So on November 13th and 14th, um, Elizabeth received some messages in 1964. And Jesus told her, he said, Satan's blindness means the universal triumph of my sacred heart, the liberation of souls, and the full opening of the road of salvation. So what that means is, souls are set free. He has to let go. He has such a stranglehold on so many souls. Again, they can't even see the beauty of God and his wonderful love. So they're held bound. They need set free. This grace will do that. Not only in your presence, and I too could tell stories about family gatherings and friends and being places and people start to, to argue. They're listening to those little thoughts in their imagination that come from you know who. And then all of a sudden you're saying that prayer in your heart and things just change. But um, also the souls of those in your parish, as, as Jill mentioned, the souls of millions of souls around the world. And I get that from the diary. And it was mentioned, oh, many times in there, Jesus says millions of souls will experience this. So in kind of a, a supernatural way and um, a spiritual way, we may not see all the effects, but they're there. Just a few of the effects are just so powerful. One thing Jesus said, uh, my mother's flame of love expands your heart to receive even more graces. So in other words, Mary's sharing her heart with us. She's the immaculate conception and she's never offended God. So she is full of grace. She's willing now to share her love for God with us. And Pope Benedict the 16th described it in 2010 in Fatima. He said, blessed mother wants to implant her own love with into our hearts. That's kind of a literal uh, way to look at it, but it's true. She wants to share her love with us. So she also says that her love will soften the hardest heart. Even the hardest sinner will convert with this grace. Um, she said that it will touch all your family members, even if they're not present with you. If you receive the grace and you are praying these prayers, your family members are being touched Converted. with grace in such a way yeah. that they are open to the gospel. They, they begin to feel drawn to God because we receive... Mary's own virtues and desires through her flame of love. So we'll find ourselves changing. We'll find ourselves transformed in, an, in a really accelerated way and into holiness and to really giving yourself to God. It's, it's a powerful grace. I'd like to put a challenge out there before you say anything, Jill. For those of you watching, our, our Lord, Our Lady, I always say this, test, test me in this. The Lord says this, test me in this. So I want you to think about that most contentious relationship you have, a, a colleague, perhaps an ex-spouse. I don't like the word ex because there's no such thing as an ex-spouse. Even divorce doesn't un unmarry you. So it's someone, a, a spouse who has divorced you in the world and you have a contentious relationship with him or her. I want you to just prior to entering that house or that workspace, pray the flame, the unity prayer. And then I want you to text me, uh, email me and let me know what happened. Was there a change? Was there a change in you? Was there a change in the, the, the behaviors, the interactions that normally would have been contentious? All of a sudden they were easy because Satan is not allowed to be there at that point and it works. So test the Lord in it. He's not going to give us anything that isn't um, foolproof. So uh, that's what I have to say um, about that. Jill, I cut you off. What were you about to say? Um, no, that's excellent. And and I, I think especially that prayer is powerful for everyone. But marriages, we know that marriages are being attacked um, in, in such a powerful way now more than ever before. 
And so thank you for just challenging people to put the prayer to test mm -hmm. um, and see what our Lord and our lady do. I want to um, share with you this passage from the diary that talks about this um, unity prayer and this blinding of Satan. And it's on page 60 of the diary. It says, I assure you, little one, that I have never before given into your hands such a powerful force of grace, the burning flame of the love of my heart. Ever since the word became flesh, I have never undertaken a greater movement than the flame of love of my heart who rushes to you. Until now, nothing could blind Satan as much. And then Mary showed Elizabeth the effects of blinding Satan. Here's what she described. Now Satan has been blinded now for some hours and has ceased dominating souls. Lust is the sin making so many victims. Because Satan is now powerless and blind, the evil spirits are set and near it. As it as if fallen into lethargy, they do not understand what has happened. Satan has stopped giving them orders. Consequently, souls are free from the do dominion of the evil one and now making sound resolutions. Once those millions of souls emerge from this event, they will be much stronger in their resolve to stay firm. So the effects of the flame of love, the principal purpose is to blind Satan, to disable Satan in this world for and then also for the salvation of souls so this blinding of satan in our own life how it affects you is it helps us to enter into that reparative state for the church because as we become unified with the lord and our lady we want to save souls this is the purpose of the cause is to save souls for our lord and our lady so it helps us to enter into that praying that extra rosary, um, um, doing that extra holy hour, offering everything up to our Lord and our lady. Um, but then it also um, accelerates and brings about the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the second Pentecost. And so the, to bring this era of peace and to save the world from coming catastrophes. So we've, we've never needed this more and our Lord has never let us fall, right? He lets us fall, but he's never forgotten us. We are not forgotten by our Lord. What's going on in people's families? We are not forgotten by our Lord. He is with us. And, and not only is he with us, but he's giving us the gift that will help save our family. So one thing that's very interesting, um, and I don't know how Lori feels about this, but even three years ago, this term blinding Satan was very um, uh, contentious for people. Like, what does that mean? And that can't happen. And that, you know, how, 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 how could anything possibly blind Satan? Now we are, have seen in the movement just in the last three years, how people don't even ask questions anymore about what does it mean? They're desperate. Families are desperate yes. now and they know that we're in a battle and they know, and they see the battle. So, um, so Crystal clear. shockingly. Yeah, yeah. In their own. I mean, it's shocking what we hear families going through um, everything from, you know, uh, the, well, everything on Satan's agenda, right? Yeah. We, we know what the problems are. The flame of love and the sacramental life is the solution. Our Lord and Our Lady are faithful. And if we do the things that they're asking, we will not only um, help bring about this triumph, but we will see the triumph ourselves. For our, our Lord and Our Lady promise, if we do these things, we will see the results of our labors. Well, what is our labor? It's to repair, it's to atone, it's to enter into this um, life of the Beatitudes. And may I add, um, as you said, we know it's clear, it's clear and clear as each day passes that Satan is attacking. Well, the Jesus tells us in this diary of messages to Elizabeth Kendallman and to us, he says that two things I can quote, is that Satan is attacking mankind like never before, 
and that Satan wants to destroy families. He just says it right there. And then he talks about a storm. And then he says a hurricane. And this is back in the 60s. And now he said it's this is coming. Well, it's upon us, this hurricane. And he says that what the point of attack is the faith. Satan wants to destroy our faith. Interestingly, Jesus um, inserted something after Mary was talking about her flame of love in these messages. Jesus said, and my mother's flame of love will be to your generation as the ark was to Noah's. Now, two things I would add to that. In Matthew 24, Jesus said, as he was describing these times, these tumultuous times that would be the end times, he said that it'll be like in the days of Noah. Well, if you go back to Genesis 6, you'll read that there was violence and sin covered the entire world. It was so bad. But we've been told through various um, messages and things that, that it's even worse than the time of Noah now. It is so bad. But I find this very fascinating. In northern Kentucky right now, Walton, Kentucky, I believe, Noah's Ark has been rebuilt for the first time in the history of man, according to the exact dimensions yeah. that God gave to Noah, even with the gopher wood, they imported that from another continent so they could build this ark. I've actually been there. It's fascinating. It's huge. But I thought, well, God, there are no accidents in God. The timing of this is amazing. This just happened in 2015. The hurricanes upon us, the storm. Jesus said, get in to my mother's, the ark of her immaculate heart, where Bishop Rickon said, it's not only a protection, it's a reservoir of grace. And I think that's really significant because she's going to sustain us and nourish us during these times when our faith is going to be attacked and challenged. And it could be like the frog in the pot. It happens so gradually. You don't yeah. even realize you're not placing your confidence in our Lord and our lady on a daily right. basis, that daily piety is just waning because our culture is suffocating. It's a, it's a culture war. We're in. So um, again, this grace is for such a time of this and people need to really open their hearts to this beautiful gift from our lady to help us through these. Times. Yeah. You know, actually, I think this would be a good time to insert a clip. We have a video for you. And in this video, Bishop Ricken, who is the bishop of Green Bay, I believe, who approved the, the Marian apparitions. And um, in this video, he, Father James Blunt, as well as Father Chris Alar, also speak of the flame of love. And by the way, I can't believe I forgot, we are having a conference here in Virginia Beach on October 12th. And Father Chris Alar is our keynote speaker, as well as Christine Watkins, who's written a book on the flame of love. Daniel O'Connor and Mark Mallet, who've talked about what you just said, um, Lori, that they get these visions of the storm, the, a storm like a hurricane. And uh, they did a series of videos in the Countdown to the Kingdom um, website that talked about that. And as you were speaking, I realized we are in the outer outer winds. You know, I'm in Virginia, so we get hurricanes. So when the winds first start coming, but we're going to get closer and closer to the eye of the storm, which is going to be pretty powerful. But um, let's let them tell you just a little bit more. I believe the video is about four minutes long. Let's listen to what they have to say, and we'll be right back. And that many of you are gathered here for called the Flame of Love Devotion, was appeared, uh, the Blessed Mother appeared to a simple, humble woman in Budapest, Hungary, Elizabeth Kindleman, not too many decades ago, and revealed the living flame of love, the flame of love. And this is what she said to her, the grace from the flame of love of my mother's immaculate heart will be to your generation what Noah's Ark was to his generation. So you see it is that flame of divine love within the Immaculate Heart of Mary that will be our reservoir. It will be our place of refuge. And that is not just a physical place, although it is that as well, but our spiritual place of refuge and protection, which also always has physical effects in our lives. It's objective. It's not just subjective. There's an objective reality here that this prayer of the flame of love 
is extremely powerful and efficacious. We need it for this time. Amen? Boy, do we need it. And there's a quote, I don't hear this one too often, so I wanted to share this quote from Elizabeth Kindleman's diary, where Jesus said to her, of course, through this prayer, the one we just prayed, Satan will be blind and souls will not be led into sin. See, those go together. It's Satan frequently who's behind your back or your teenager's back, urging them and nagging them and obsessing them with temptation and with sin. Frequently when that happens, it's the devil himself. He needs to be blinded and bound away from the poor soul who's being persecuted in this way to sin when he or she doesn't want to sin. So the Lord said to Elizabeth through this prayer, Satan will be blind and souls will not be led into sin. Then he goes on to say, the Lord explained, quote, Satan being blind signifies a worldwide triumph of my sacred heart, the freedom of souls, and the full opening of the road of salvation. The third great act of mercy in the East called divinization, we call it sanctification, is the power of the Holy Spirit to transform you to be prepared to enter into eternal life. This is the flame of love. Your movement is the greatest act of mercy in mankind's salvation history. This is it. This is everything. Salvation history culminates in our sanctification through the power of the Holy Spirit utilizing the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ through His redemptive act on the cross. He rose from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. This third great act of mercy is what turns us and takes us back to God, the Father for all eternity. This is the flame of love. This sanctification, as Tony said, the Trinity put the love of God in the heart of Mary. What was the greatest act of mercy ever bestowed upon a creature? The Immaculate Conception. So Mary, who had this love of God, now wants to spread it through the entire world, through the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. She will prepare the world for you to be ready to receive as that love of the Holy Spirit is poured back onto the world, that you're ready to receive it, that you're ready to be sanctified. That's the flame of love. Tell us, what did that video inspire in you? Well, I think, um, obviously, we have three great preachers <laughs> that are, are really preaching on the flame of love. And then Bishop uh, Rickon's endorsement is really the way he described it, as Lori said, is Our Lady's Reservoir. It never stops giving. Um, I think mm -hmm. uh, also that Father Chris Alars, um, where he talks about this third and final act of mercy that we know that the storm is brewing. We're, we're, many of us are already deep in the storm in their families. They're experiencing these, these many illuminations um, in their own household so that, because our Lord is gonna prepare us. He's, he's a good and faithful God. And so I think that um, Father Chris explains the flame of love so well and how it ties with divine mercy so well. Um, but when I'm when I'm thinking about the central messages of the flame of love, not only is it, you know, we talked about the effects, um, but I want I really want to stop and help people understand that this is a gift. This is a gift of grace. It's for every single soul on the face of the earth. There's it's. You know, we were, I was talking to one of our regional um, leaders, Linda Ryan, and one thing that she said is, are people who have become afraid of Jesus, afraid wow. of love, you know, 
And we see that as we try to share the flame of love, especially to priests, is there, there's this dubiousness in the church right now, um, even among the, the consecrated, where, you know, we, we recognize that we're in this place of salvation history that n- no one knows what the truth is. You know, they've forgotten what the truth is. And the truth is, in the very simplest way, is that we're children of God and that he is a faithful father. And the flame of love is a gift. Um, Pope um, Benedict talks about Our Lady. We're not going to make it if we don't enter into Our Lady's Immaculate Heart. Um, he, he describes this not only as um, a, 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 something that's a gift, but it's a necessity. Relationship with Our Lady now is a necessity because she is the co-redeemer. She is um, working in unity with Jesus and, and um, our Lord and, and God. So we want to recognize the flame of love as not only a gift, but they call it in the diary three different ways that this is the greatest torrent of grace ever given to mankind since the word became flesh. This this torrent of grace coming from her heart is described the greatest miracle that she will do since the word became flesh. And so our heart Our heart of hearts is that the church, every single parish, every single diocese, every single bishop and the Pope himself will receive this grace into their hearts and start giving this grace to their children, right? The the shepherds, we want them to share this within their parish so that we can start evangelizing to the unbaptized, so that we can start sharing this gift of grace. Church, do, do your part, receive it so that we that are working in the vineyard can go and get the unbaptized so that we can bring people into Our Lady's um, Immaculate Heart, the refuge for this time. Now, if people you know, to... Jill, I think... Oh, go ahead, yeah. Well, I just wanted to add, this isn't just another devotion. We're not in no. competition with no. other movements in the church. In fact... This, because it's a grace, it will enhance every apostolate, every, every work that the church is doing. For instance, the Legion of Mary, they go out to those who have left the church. They need this grace. It would help so much to blind Satan from these people who have left. And then they'll be able to receive the gospel, receive this message of love. So it's a tool. It's a beautiful, as Jill said so well, it's a gift from our lady's heart. And, you know, I, you might say, oh, so much focus on Mary. Well, back in Genesis 3.16, what did God say? He said that her heel was going to crush the serpent's right. head. That's where his eyes are. <laughs> I mean, this was a prophetic word that she would have a place in salvation history. St. Louis de Montfort in the 1700s, he wrote extensively, St. Uh, Alphonsus Liguori, in their, their Glories of Mary, the True Devotion of Mary her place in these times. This is God's choice. And he even said at Fatima, you know, uh, Lucia was said, was, excuse me, was told that in the end that Mary's immaculate heart would triumph and that Lucia's job after the other two, her cousins died, she was to establish devotion to the immaculate heart. That's because these are Mary's times. God knew we would need her help. And she's our mother from the cross. Jesus said, you know, this is your mother. You know, when you think about, I thought about this a lot because I work with relationships and men and women, and of course, Satan's trying to confuse us on gender and things. But if you were a man and a bus was coming and your wife pushed you out of the way so she would take take that hit for you, that is just not normal. Men do not want to be saved by their wives. They'd rather take the bus and and, and die <laughs> for their wives. So I've heard exorcists, it may have been either... Um, Father Chad Ripperger and others, or at least him, but they talked about how Satan is afraid of God, but he is terrified of Mary because God is God. But Mary was a 14-year-old little girl. A li- so it's like the schoolyard bully having his butt kicked by a little girl <laughs> on the playground. 
<laughs> it's humiliating. Very embarrassing. Yeah. And that's why God shows, well, one of them, God did what God did for God's reasons. But I believe that is one of the reasons God said, a woman will do this because your pride is epic. I am going to crush you in a way. And that's why I wish our Protestant brothers and sisters would kind of latch on to this. It's like Mary is not God and no one ever said she was and she does not have the power of God, but she has whatever God gives her and he honors his own mother. It is a commandment. And if he said, honor thy father and mother, and he chose to give himself a mother. And I say this very seriously. God could have made the human race be born of eggs, just like yeah. chickens, right? Yeah. We, but he chose to give each one of us a mother and a father. And then he chose to give himself a mother and said, yeah. honor thy father and mother. And if you listen correctly to his first miracle, and I've been praying this one lately, when they ran out of wine and he said, oh. he said, mother, it is not yet my time. He's God and he knew that was not his time. And yet when she said, Amen. do what he says, like a good Jewish mother, right? <laughs> oh, boy, yeah. He did. He honored his mother who with love just says, do what my boy tells you. And so oh, I just wish my Protestant brothers and sisters would, would hear that. And just well, we love we love that. And one of the things that we call the flame of love of Our Lady's Immaculate Heart Grace is the new wine for the church. Mm -hmm. This is not only did she give us the new wine at the wedding feast of Cana, she's doing it again today. Yep. She yeah. remember, she went to God the Father and basically she says again, we've run out of wine. We've run out of wine. And I believe that that's where we are. We believe, and according to um, the spiritual diary and the sign of our times, we've run out of wine again. Yes. But she has made a way with the flame of love. This is her love for God poured out into each and every heart. She is giving us, as a matter of fact, not only is she giving it to us, she says in the diary, she suffers until she can give us this grace, she suffers. And the grace has passed heart to heart. This isn't, you, you don't have to go to a class. You don't have to pick up the book even. All you have to do is open your heart to receive the gift of grace. And she will suffer until you receive it. She wants that desperately to give it. We were actually Great. having flame of love prayer cynicals at our house and that you can Good. go on the internet Good. and print a one page document that tells you how to do the frame of flame of love prayer cynical. Every single prayer says, number one, do this. Number two, do this. I'd have people over to my house. We'd have um, food and snacks was supposed to be after, but we'd start having it first because <laughs> we're just, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd pray the Seneca, but it is a and inside of every Hail Mary is the is part of the flame of love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread, the, Spread effect. the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And so to think, I never knew before I did the show, I didn't know until you just saw that, that one person praying it can cover the whole parish. So that's powerful. And then Lori, you're right. If, if I know, Lord, I'm going to pray this. So all of the people, my St. Anne Sodality are going to get covered by it. The St. Vincent de Paul is going to get covered by it. My women walking with purpose are going to get covered by it. The men of St. Joseph are going to get covered by it. But your husband who's got an addiction to pornography, if this blinds Satan for hours, you go to that computer, you go to your man when you know he's going to come home and perhaps he struggles most with pornography and you pray and blind him. Your child yes. is struggling with addiction. You pray when you think he might be ready to stick a needle in his arm as soon as he leaves the house. You pray that and you pray and God is just so amazing. You will see miracles, but I just want you to post them here on the show because we will show people that this is not just words. This is God and he's alive and well. And, and you know mom. what? That's, that is another word that's used over and over again in the diary is miracles. Mary says this will produce miracles. She said miracles of the heart, especially. That's the hardest one. People have 
children that have left the church. We have loved ones around us who have closed their hearts. They seem so hard of heart. We just heard a miracle story when we were in, uh, in fact, in Nathita, Wisconsin, a couple of weeks ago. Um, this woman said they'd been praying the flame of love rosary faithfully. She's got a cynical and even her and her husband. And so one of her husband's brother who hadn't spoken to their dad in 15 years, all of a sudden, he finally comes to this gathering for her husband's birthday and miraculously his heart softened and they had been really bearing down with these flame of love prayers and they, they had a, a healing and reconciliation. And we're hearing these stories. I've seen it. My own family I had it uh, last summer, a brother-in-law. He had, we hadn't had much contact with them for years and years and years. I mean, 20 years. And all of a sudden he had this experience comes actually comes from Pennsylvania to our home and had flowers and and uh, all kinds of gifts and things and spent the weekend with us and reconciled with everyone. Um, so this is, in fact, I'll say this one last thing. That's one of the effects and promises in the diary is Mary says that I want to unite scattered families. She says that I want to unite scattered families. If your Beautiful. spouse has divorced you, Pray the flame of love, soften his or her heart and watch the miracles happen. Our, our lady said to Lucia at Fatima, and she reported to Cardinal Kafara in 1917, this happened. She reported sometime after that, that our lady said the final battle, the final battle between God and Satan would be for marriage and the family. And then they sent the flame of love. So, yeah, amen. Pray. And, and you know, and it's interesting you say that. I'm sorry. I'll, this is just no, a very quick ahead. thing. 1959, a Father Fuentes interviewed with Sister Lucia. And Sister Lucia said, Our Lady is now giving such an efficacy to the rosary that there is no problem in your families and even in the world that it cannot remedy. Why did she say that in 1959? The message for the flame of love happened two years later. And we're being given this, this little petition to add to your Hail Mary that's making it from a World War II weapon to a nuclear bomb. I mean, it, it's really <laughs> destroying Satan's kingdom and especially stronghold on family. I'd like to give you guys final words, but what all the things I've forgotten to say is I will put a link to the prayer cynical instructions right here in the show notes. Someone said to me, how do you check the show notes before you even watch this video and you see the thumbnail, you see the little words underneath, just click on it. Usually it says more, click on that word more, and it'll open up all of the, the, the notes that I have. And I'm saying this because, you know, I'm a blonde and it took me forever to figure that out. And so I have people going, how do you find the show notes? So that's how. So in there, I have a link to the Prayer Cynical. I will have a link to the Flame of Love Conference in Champion, Wisconsin. I will have a link to the conference in Virginia Beach, truthspeakers.org, which Father Chris Ayler and the Countdown to the Kingdom crew will be coming. And uh, awesome. Watkins, we said, has written her book on the Flame of Love. Um, what else, ladies, should we put in those show notes that we want to make sure that our viewers get their hands on? Um, no, I would ahead. say I would say definitely our conference flyer um, or a link to our conference there at Champion, um, Christine. Also, um, I think that it's important again to touch on those ABCs. It's very simple. Um, the The diary is long. It's a it's a beautiful work of. Um, Anthony Mullen calls it a, a masterpiece on suffering, <laughs> but it, it has miracles of the heart. As Lori was talking about the flame of love has miracles. So um, information about where to get the diary. Um, but remember the ABCs, this is a gift of grace for all of humanity for this time. If you receive this and allow the grace to build up in your heart, it will blind Satan. The unity prayer, it will blind Satan, use it. The, we call that the low hanging fruit of the movement. And then um, C is the conversion of the whole world. But I think one of the most important gifts and things that we could do today, Christine, is to pray that everyone listening would receive the flame of love, grace into their hearts. Some people call it a signal grace for this time. So um, we, I know that Lori and I would like to do that. But before we do, Lori, did you have any closing thoughts before we um, 
pray the flame of love, grace into people's hearts? I think two things come to mind. One is where Jesus says in the diary, he says that if we will embrace this, he said that human words cannot express the reward we will give be given in heaven. Because there is some sacrifice, there's some self-donation. You embrace this, you pray these prayers, you be intentional. And he also says that the angels and saints are looking on at us in awe and admiration, that we are privileged to live in these times. And this is a privilege to be able, makes me want to cry, to, to receive this from the heart of the mother of God. It's, it's an amazing thing. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. We were given to live in these times and just open your heart now. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, so, if, oh yeah, you're going to do that. And before we close up, I, I, I would prayer. like to, yeah, yes. Um, and we could start by praying um, as we prepare our hearts to receive this grace into our own hearts. Again, this is the love that Mary has for God and her son pouring out into our own hearts. This is the gift. Um, so as we prepare our hearts to receive, I'd like everyone, if we can, who, who is listening, who is watching to think about their baptism. Just think about that moment in their baptism, whether they were an infant or they were an adult, just think about the baptismal promises that you made for those who are not baptized. I would um, encourage you to think about Jesus washing you anew with his grace. Let's prepare our hearts now. Imagine yourself clothed in white garments, a symbol of your baptism and of your future life in heaven with the angels and the saints. Imagine an enormous fire. You enter into that fire. Do not be afraid. The fire is Jesus himself, the flame of love. You are not alone. Mary is with you. You are in the deepest part of her heart, immersed in her flame of love. Mary fills you with great desires so that you want to receive more and more of this flame. Surrender to the flame and to have him consume your whole life. The flame is Jesus himself and he is the pearl of a great price, the treasure hidden in the field and the whole purpose of your life. Allow the flame to enter your being. Allow Jesus to fill your imagination and memory. Open your heart wide and allow Jesus to pour out his graces on, on your woundedness, on your triumphs any pain that you've suffered or are currently suffering right now, Our Lady is pouring out her love into all of the places of your heart. After imagining Jesus pouring out his love into these places in your heart, allow the flame to come into your will. Give your fiat now to the Lord as you welcome him and he enters your heart. You have invited Jesus now to be the center of your life. He is your king. Place this fire on the lampstand and Jesus, his light will flood you. When you receive this flame as you're receiving it right now, you experience the communion of saints. When one receives, all are blessed. When all receive, each is more blessed. Right now, Our Lady embraces you and pours out her flame of love in great abundance. This is a holy and sacred moment. She sends this flame into your heart because the flame belongs in your heart. and She suffers to give it to you. And she gives it to you without any limits. She gives it freely. The flame of his love is so great. 
and it belongs in your heart. She gives gifts that were meant for others, but they did not receive. Right now, receive this flame for everyone, for yourself, for your family, for your friends. You will not realize all that she has done for you this day. The effects will unfold slowly and powerfully. Be still. The prayer is complete. Receive Our Lady's love into your hearts. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to share the gift of the flame of love. And for all those that have just received, if you want to learn more, the show note notes that Christine mentioned are available. But please visit our website, flameoflove.us. Please come to the conference this, this weekend in, at Our Lady of Champion Shrine. We promise you, you will not be disappointed and you God only knows what he has in store for you yes so thank you Christine for allowing us to be on the show um and I I believe that this is just the start of yeah. our work together for souls and we're just so grateful for everything that you do um to to bring about this conversion to bring about God's divine will well, I should be thanking you ladies for doing what you're doing. And for those of you that are watching and you're watching it after this coming weekend, go to Our Lady of Champions yes. Shrine. Her feast day, the Vatican is looking for, is perhaps October 9th. But go there any other time from someone who's been to Fatima, Guadalupe, and Our Lady of Champion. I struggle to say if this was my favorite or Fatima, it's just that powerful. Wow. Make a pilgrimage to go there. Get a busload from your church or just go by yourself. Take your family. If you homeschool, take your kids there. It is yes. holy ground. And I'd love for all of you to be yeah. there. Yes, everything that we've talked about will be in the show notes. <laughs> and if you have any other questions or comments, post them here and I'll make sure we get you some answers. So. Um, oh, and then all the important stuff like follow me on breakfastwithbacon.com and then all my stuff like Facebook and Twitter and whatever, Rumble, Instagram. I always forget to say all that part. So, um, okay, ladies, I think you know how we end this show. We're going to see how well our lady trained you, right? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> all right, we got this. I am Dr. Christine Bacon. You've been watching Breakfast with Bacon, and I'd like to remind you to live your life Sunny side Sunny up. Side up. <laughs> <laughs> Got it.